Hello boys and girls, welcome to Kids Connection. My name is Audrey Zorik. I am the director of Kids Connection here at Vallejo Drive Church, a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God. I am so happy that you joined us today. And if this is your first time, I wanna welcome you and let you know that we have programs like this every week. Come back for more programs where we can worship God together. And if you are a regular, I wanna welcome you back. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm so happy that we get to spend this time together. Without further ado, welcome to another Kids Connection program. Now, I miss you guys so much as I cannot get tired of saying, and I wish you guys were here. But since you're not here, I'm glad that you join us online. Worshiping together, no matter where we are, if we are online, if we are here at Kids Connection, at least we are worshiping God. And God deserves to be worshiped because he is amazing, isn't he? Now, I hope that you guys are home safe with mom, dad, or with grandparents. And I hope that everyone is safe. And I pray for your safety every day. Believe it or not, it's been about a month and a half since we've been doing this. That's a long time. It was even before school started. It was actually just before spring break. We went on spring break. We came back from spring break. We are in school now, in classes, online. And here we are still having Kids Connection online. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, to get another Kids Connection pro program started, we're going to sing our song of the day. And our song of the day is just the beginning of this adventure that I'm taking you on today. An adventure. I love adventures. Yes, you heard it right. I'm going to take you in an, on an adventure that hopefully it'll, it'll bring good memories to you. All right? But before we get to that adventure, let's go ahead and sing our song of the day together. Stand up, mom, dad, everyone, let's sing it. Yes, that was fun. And I remember singing the song with you guys right here at Kids Connection. Everyone was jumping around and doing all the motions. Even Kid was here with us. That was awesome. Hopefully we get to do that very soon again. Now let's bow our heads so we can talk to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for another beautiful Sabbath. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your love. Thank you because all the boys and girls are watching this program at home. Bless them. Keep them safe. Keep mom and dad safe and grandparents and everyone safe. And hopefully we can come back to Kids Connection and to Vallejo Drive Church soon so we can worship God together. Bless this program as we learn more about you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Wonderful. Now, speaking of worshiping God, how would you feel if we were in Kids Connection 
or if we were inside the church and all of a sudden someone was throwing rocks on top of the building and making all kinds of noises how would you feel about that hmm. would you feel uh, scared <gasps> what's happening or would you feel angry why are they throwing rocks on top of the church why don't they just let us worship in today's story you're gonna hear something just like that but the the story doesn't end there it has a twist pay attention to what happened to our missionary story today I used to hate the Adventists. If they had evangelistic series, I would throw stones on the roof. One day, Sihalava watched as many beautiful young ladies walked into the Adventist meetings. An idea popped into his head. I need a good wife, he thought. Maybe I can find one here. He entered the meeting and sitting in the back surveyed his options. One girl stood out to him and after the meeting he introduced himself. I didn't tell her about my bad past and I started praying to impress her. We were married soon after but instead of marriage and a beautiful wife fixing my problems, things got worse. Sihalavo had a criminal record which caught up to him, and after being found guilty of murder, he was placed on the most wanted list. Realizing his situation, Sihalavo fled to a remote forest. <laughs> He lived here for four years. I was living like an animal in the woods. I had made a mess of my life and felt like there was no hope for me. Like the prodigal son who realized he had nothing to lose, Sihalavo ventured out of the forest. Knowing his family had surely abandoned him, he went to the Seventh-day Adventist Church. An elder met him and assured Sihalavo that his place was in the church and he was always welcome. These words brought a glimmer of hope to his heart. Though the church elder was very welcoming, the other members avoided me. My past began to haunt me again, and in fear, I returned to the woods. But this time, Sihalavo took something with him to the woods, a radio. This was his only connection to the outside world, and he listened eagerly to different programs. One day, he stumbled across an AWR broadcast. The words stirred his soul and he began to fall in love with the Jesus who would forgive a sinner like him. Excited about his new friend Jesus, Sihalavo began inviting other thieves and criminals in the area to come and hear the AWR programs too. Convinced of their salvation through the blood of Jesus, Sihalavo and 15 other ex-criminals came out of the woods and were baptized into the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Together with my friends who were once thieves, we built a church where we all worshiped together on Sabbath. Today, Sihalavo also leads out in a small group study where they listen to AWR programs and pray together. Sihalavo preaches like John the Baptist wherever he goes and is often called apostle by those who know him. AWR changed my life. Through it, I found forgiveness and hope. How crazy was that? 
I loved this story and how his life got turned around. All because of Jesus' love and how the people and the missionaries of that place was able to share God's love with him. Isn't it incredible what the missionaries are doing? But they can only do that if we help them with our financial support. Don't forget to ask mom and dad to click on the link above here and ask them to donate to the missionaries. Thank you for your offering. Now, today, as I promised, I'm going to be taking you on an adventure. How can we go on an adventure together? Well, here's how. The adventure that I'm going to take you on is right here at Vallejo Drive Church in a Kids Connection. How are we going to do that? Well, here it is. Do you guys remember Kids Connection? Do you remember this place? Do you remember all the kids playing together? Look at the rugs. Look at the puppet stage. Do you remember all the rugs on the floor and how we all chase each other and we play together? Oh, here. Here's something else. See that? Right now we don't have a game because you guys are not here. But look. This is Kids Connection. The place where we connected with each other. The place where we had fun together. The place where mom and dad brought you every Sabbath. Remember this? Remember that mom and dad were sitting back here on these chairs as they were waiting for you to finish your, your uh, program here at Kids Connection and then go to your classrooms? Wait, speaking of classrooms, yes, that's part of my adventure. Let's go ahead. I'm going to take you to your classrooms. And here's the first classroom that I'm taking you to. Remember this classroom? Yes, this is Miss Teresa's classroom. All the tiny tots. Here's your classroom. Do you guys miss this classroom? Do you miss being here? Do you miss playing with your friends and watching uh, the program that Miss Teresa prepared for you every Sabbath? Well, here it is. Here's your classroom. And it's got nobody in it. This classroom is waiting for you. This classroom is here. All the chairs are empty. The teacher is not here, just us. But this is a special place for you. And this classroom is going to be here until this coronavirus goes away, until all this madness goes away. And then we can come here and we can watch Miss Teresa have the program on Sabbath morning and sing with you guys and have the pianos play. Look at that, the piano is right there and nobody's playing it. This place is empty, but this place is waiting for you. This place is ready for you to come back. And we're hoping that will be soon. Now, I'm gonna take you to your next classroom. Okay, our next stop is the kindergarten room. Do you guys remember this place? Yes, look at this. Look at all the chairs. Look at where the teacher sits. Look at your birthdays on the wall. Look at all the posters. Look at the signs and everything. Look at the empty chairs. The empty chairs are still here. That's your place right there. Do you remember where you used to sit? Well, I got news for you. Your chair is still here and your chair is waiting for you. As soon as this is over, you are going to be welcome in this classroom, just like before, where we get to worship God together, where we sing and where we praise and where, where we learn more about Jesus. This place is here and it's waiting for you. Do you miss this place? I miss seeing you here. Let's see what our next room is. And our next stop is primaries. That's right, primary. Look at your classroom. Look at all your cubbies. Look at your signs on the walls with your names. Look at where the teacher sat and taught you lessons. Look at your chairs. Look at the tables where you did all your activities. Everything is here still in place and it's waiting just for you do you guys miss this place i hope so 
I miss seeing you here. And remember, very soon you're going to be here again and you're going to be participating of the classroom and listening to the story of your teacher right here in this classroom. Let's go to your, see what's next. Yes, our next stop is juniors. Juniors, you guys remember this class? Some of you already graduated to juniors while you were out on quarantine. When you come back, you're going to be in this classroom. Look at this. This classroom is ready for you guys. This classroom misses you guys. I miss seeing you in this classroom. Remember where Mr. Michael sits to teach you the lesson and where you have your activities on this table right here? Here we are. Welcome to Juniors. This classroom is not the same without you. And hopefully, you're going to be here soon. In the meantime, we just keep enjoying our classrooms online. And hopefully, you are receiving that connection that we are hoping that you receive. And you learn a little bit about God every Sabbath. And you learn how to connect with God a little bit more. Mm. Do we have another classroom? Yes, we do. Surprise, surprise. I'm going to take you to our last classroom. Let's go. And here we are. Welcome to our last classroom that we visit today. This is the beginners. This is where the little babies gather and worship God. And this classroom too is empty. Look at this. Nobody's here. The program that the teachers used to make here every Sabbath are being presented online, just like your program. And the babies, they're home with their parents. They are learning about God at home. And their classroom, too, is empty. With the empty chairs. You see this? But don't worry, because very soon, all these chairs are going to be filled with babies and parents. And some of the babies that were coming here, again, are not going to be here. They're going to be in a different classroom because they're growing. But the important thing is, what are we doing? What are you doing while we are in quarantine? Are you still worshiping God? Are you going to school? Are you helping mom and dad in the house? What are you doing? I can't wait for you guys to be here and for us to worship God together. Now, let's go back to Kids Connection. Now, here we are back at Kids Connection. Remember the table? Remember the welcoming? And where all the youth were here helping you guys and, and giving you hugs every week? Well, we're back at our Kids Connection place. Here it is. And look for you guys, for you. Remember this place. This place is waiting for you. This place is waiting for you to come and worship God here again. We are going to be so happy to have you all back. And we're going to have a special program when we get to worship together again here at Kids Connection. Now, why am I showing you all this? What does this have to do with our lesson today? This adventure? Well, this adventure that we are having here at Kids Connection is an adventure that I want you to have. Do you know why? Because in our classroom today, we are going to learn about an adventure. An adventure that we are in now. What adventure is this? Well, guess what? Jesus came to earth and he died. He resurrected and he went to heaven. However, he is in heaven preparing a place for you. And you know what? That place in heaven is ready for you. That place in heaven is ready for you and I. Now, just like the quarantine, we are stuck at home. We are here on earth. 
We are not in heaven yet, but in today's classroom, we are going to learn what we are going to be doing while we are in this earth. What are we supposed to do? What are you doing while we wait for Jesus to come and take us home? But before we do that, I'm going to invite you guys to stand up again and sing our song of the day one more time. Let's sing it together. Thank you so much for singing with us again. And thank you for being a part of our program online. Thank you for being a part of Kids Connection. And thank you for waiting for us. This place is waiting for you. Kids Connection is waiting to celebrate, worship God together in this place with you. The same way that we are waiting to worship God in heaven with him. Let's pray as we close our program for today. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for being our God. Thank you so much for your sacrifice. I ask that now that we are going to listen to our story in our classrooms, teacher. I, I ask that you help us to understand the story and to understand what your plan is for us on this earth. Thank you for heaven. Thank you for salvation. And thank you for being our God. Bless each child. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Great. Don't forget, tomorrow we have Kid to Kid at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. This afternoon, parents are welcome to our Parents Connection, where we get to talk to each other and see how everybody's doing. Now, don't forget to check all the activities on the bottom of our page here, where it gets updated with new activities every week. And I want to tell you guys, and I want to ask you guys something. I want to hear from you. I want to hear from the kids. So if you could ask mom and dad to help all the kids write an email to us. Let us know how you are. Send an email to the church, vallejo at graceunconditional.com. Write a little note how you're doing. We want to hear from you. And next week, I'm going to read it up here, the story that you write us. I want to hear from you. Are you enjoying the programs at home? Are you enjoying the activities? What are you doing? How is your school? How are you helping mom and dad? Are you, did, you, did you get a new pet? Did you guys uh, make, new, make new friends online? 
Are you guys enjoying our kid to kid program? Which by the way, last week we had some technical issues and we couldn't connect the Zoom, but tomorrow we're gonna be on with kid to kid and have another game for you guys. But I wanna hear from you. I want to see how you're doing and I'm going to read some of those depending on how many of you write us. I won't be able to read them all on on this program, but next week I'm, I promise that I'm going to be uh, I'm going to read some of your comments and how you're doing. So have mom and dad help you write that email to Vallejo at graceunconditional.com and I'm going to read those emails in the air tomorrow uh, next Sabbath here at Kids Connection. Thank you so much for being a part of another Kids Connection program. I hope you enjoyed it. Now here comes your teacher's lessons. So don't go anywhere. And by the way, I want to thank all the teachers. I want to thank, thank Miss Josie that helps with the beginners. I want to thank Miss Teresa that helps with the tiny tots. I want to thank Miss Kelly that helps with um, kindergarten as along with Miss uh, Patty and also Mr. Robert and also primary with Miss Kathleen and uh, all the teachers have been great. Thank you so much for all your, your hard work and I hope that you guys are enjoying, um, the kids are enjoying the program as well. Uh, we're planning to do something a little bit different on the next upcoming program. So let your friends know about this program. Let your friends know about what we have here at Kids Connection. Invite them to be a part of our program and I can't wait to have you guys right here at our Kids Connection program. Until next Sabbath, I will see you guys. Bye-bye, be good, and be safe. Bye-bye. Good morning, everybody. Hey, happy Sabbath. And I hope that you've all been well and safe and you know, just enjoying um, God's creation, maybe time with family and friends. And I, of course, miss you very much. Um, this has really been going longer than I think any of us would have imagined. But we're just going to take it one day at a time and trust in the Lord. Hey, uh, let's pray uh, together. We got a, a great lesson today. Probably the best part of the gospel message, actually. So let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, what a beautiful day to be alive and to know that you are our king. And we trust fully in you, Lord, for our very lives and to guide us into all righteousness. And Lord, um, open our hearts today to this awesome gospel message that we might remember that something great and wonderful is soon to happen and to look forward to that day. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, my friends, so now I'm at the beginning of the lesson. <laughs> the returning king. So, so as Christians, I mean, what is the most important thing to us? Well, it's Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And what is it about Jesus? Why do we just want to continue to worship him? It's, if he's up in heaven and we're down here, um, yes, he sends his spirit to be with us, but there's still that, there's somewhat of a distance, right? We're not physically with him. We're not with the angels. We're not, we're not with God the Father. So what is it that's ultimately our hope? Well, of course, that's what we're going to be looking at today. <clears throat> what is our hope? And the title tells us what it is, The Returning King. And let's get into our lesson today. So, first of all, before Jesus returned to heaven, he made a promise to us all. And that promise is in John 14, 1 to 3. And many of you probably know this promise. It says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. So that great promise, right? So what did Jesus promise in these verses? Well, he promised to go and prepare a place in heaven and then to come back for us so that we could be with him forever. Of course, we're still waiting for Jesus to come back, 
But it's important to know that if Jesus makes a promise, right, that he's going to keep it. Before Jesus left the earth, the disciples asked him some of the same questions you may have about his return. Um, so let's look at some of those questions and the Bible answers for each one of them. Okay, now, what are some of the signs that point to Jesus coming again and the end of the world as we know it? So Jesus said there would be false teachers, even ones claiming to be Christ himself, who would mislead many people in the last days. Jesus did not want them to be fearful, but he said there also would be wars and famines, which means there's not enough food or there's droughts, not enough rain, and earthquakes. He warned that many believers would be hated, persecuted, and killed. Sin would be everywhere. Uh, when you see the leaves begin to form on the trees, you know that summer is coming. So when you see all kinds of trouble, you can know that Jesus will return. The good news, Jesus will be preached throughout the world before the end comes. So signs of the end of the age. So let's take a look at the most current sign, which is the COVID-19 coronavirus, right? This is a pestilence, it's a, a disease, um, that's, you know, killing and causing harm to, you know, untold thousands of people in the United States, all over the, all over the world. Jesus said that these signs of these problems would be continuing to escalate. That means to get larger and larger until his return. And we've never seen a response to a disease like we're seeing today where the entire country, except for some vital services, is being shut down. I mean, maybe your own parents are at home with you now, right? Maybe they're not working. Maybe their jobs have been shuttered for a time. And again, signs that Jesus pointed to um, of that the world as we know it is going to be coming to an end. Question, when will Jesus come again? So we get the signs. Okay, so now when's he going to come? We understand why the disciples had questions for Jesus. Now, these are the disciples' questions that they asked in the New Testament. Of course, they did not want Jesus to leave them, but if he had to go, when would he be back? According to Matthew, Chapter 24, verse 36, Jesus said, no one knows about that day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Anytime that we try to set dates, Jesus is saying, hey, no one knows. You're not going to know until I actually come. So we don't know when Jesus will come. However, we do have the signs of the times. We do see the world degenerating into great sin. It's all around us. It's all over the internet. You know, it's all over the news. You can't go anywhere. You can't turn on any channels. You can't go to the internet without seeing all of the terrible sin that the world has come to. All right, so we don't know when Jesus is coming back exactly. But do we know how he will come back? Like when he comes, will we know it's him and not an imposter? Like not Satan, you know, pretending to be Christ. Like how do we know how he's going to come back? It says in Acts 1.11, This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. So he's going to come down just as they saw him go up. People will see Jesus coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. He will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather his followers. So this is how we know we're going to recognize Jesus. He's going to be with the clouds of heaven. Well, what does that mean, the clouds of heaven? 
well, it's not the clouds you see in the sky. Why would he bring those clouds with him? Those are just everyday normal events. No, the clouds of heaven is most likely referring to the multitude of millions upon millions of angels that are going to be accompanying him. So this is how we're going to recognize Jesus is coming. There's going to be a great trumpet sound, right? And together, and then all the followers are going to be gathered with him. Now, this is a good question. Who is Jesus coming for? Jesus said in the days before his return, people would not be looking for him. It will be like it was in the days of Noah and the big flood. Remember, Noah warned the people that God was going to judge the earth with a flood. But as you know, they didn't listen. They kept feasting and partying right up to the day of the flood. So today, people will not be looking for Jesus, but will be going about their normal routines. Now, two will be working in the field. One will be taken while the other one is left. Two will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and the other will be left. When it is time, Jesus will tell his angels to gather his people home to heaven. And in John 3, 16 says, this is his people who, who are his people. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. And here's the point. Who is it that Jesus is coming for? That whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So those who believe in Jesus, those who are followers of Jesus, those, are, those who are Jesus' disciples, those who obey Jesus' words, those who have the Holy Spirit, who have the heart of Christ, the fruit of the Spirit. These are the people Jesus is coming for. He's not coming for everybody else. No. He's coming for his followers, those who believe in him. Now, question, why is Jesus coming back? I mean, why, doesn't, why don't we just keep on going on the way that things have been going on? Why is he coming back? Jesus is the returning king, and he's coming back to rule over the world. He's going to restore everything to its perfect condition. There will be no more sin and no more death. The devil and his followers will be sent to eternal punishment. He will be lifted up as king, and we will worship him. We will live in joy with him forever. So Jesus is coming back so that we may be with him and so that there will be an end to sin and death. Let's take a look at our main verse for today. This is from Philippians 2, verses 9 to 11. Wherefore God also hath given him a name, which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So what does this verse tell us about the name God gave Jesus? It is above every name. How does this verse tell us we should treat God's name? We should treat it with honor and respect. What does this verse tell us about our words associated with Jesus? Our words should confess that he is Lord. One day Jesus will be the returning king. And, you know, it's going to be an amazing day uh, when Jesus comes back. And we're going to bow to him as our king. So, you know, like in the United States, we don't have a monarchy. We have a democracy. We have a republic. You know, where we elect, you know, our president and, you know, our politicians, our elected leaders to Congress, to the Senate, to the House of Representatives, and so forth. But Jesus, his government is not like ours. He's going to be a king. And he's going to be the great righteous king, the true king. And we will all you know, bow to him. We don't bow to the president of the United States, but we're going to bow to Jesus Christ because he's a king. What should we do 
closing thoughts now. What should we do as we wait for him to return? Good question, right? Uh, maybe he wants us to do some things as you know, he's preparing to come back for us. Let's see. Jesus said that we must be ready for his return. He gave the example of a homeowner and a thief. If the homeowner knew the exact time the thief would break into his house, this home, of course he would be ready and keep him from stealing anything from his house. Therefore, we must be watching because we do not know the exact time Christ is coming again. Many people will not be expecting Jesus' return, and they're not going to be ready. They may think they have plenty of time to trust Jesus before he comes again, but he will come unexpectedly, and then it will be too late. I want to ask you something. This virus, the coronavirus that we're, that we're dealing with in the world today, wasn't this a sudden thing? It's like it came all quickly, almost out of nowhere. It originated supposedly in China, and then all of a sudden it's spreading throughout the entire world in the matter of a few short weeks. Was anybody expecting it? Very few, maybe some, but I don't know anyone that was personally. Was anybody preparing for this virus in, in, in any way? I didn't know anybody, I don't know about you. Really? Well, we're, it just came. Jesus is gonna come in the same way. We're not gonna be expecting that time. It's, it's not gonna be a time that we think. He's gonna be coming like a thief in the night when we don't really expect. So, we need to be ready at all times. So what does it mean that we need to be ready? Does it mean you're gonna pack your suitcase? You know, fold up all your clothes really nice, you know, put your toothbrush, you know, toothpaste in there, you know, whatever. No, because we're, we just ourselves, it's going to be going with Jesus, right? So being ready must mean something else. Let's take a look at what really it means to be ready for Jesus. It says, we are to be pure. First John 3.3 3 says, everyone who has this hope, the hope of Jesus' return, that has this hope in him, purifies himself just as he is pure. Well, what is that? What is pure? Well, our thoughts, we need to keep our thoughts pure. That means we don't dwell on things that are wrong. We ask God to help us keep away from sin. So, purifying our hearts, our lives, our thoughts, our actions, our words, not dwelling on the things of this world, not spending all of our thoughts on this world, but on the coming kingdom. You know, you, you know, put your focus on the Lord and the Lord's going to take care of you, right? And look, we have to be patient. That's, that's our closing statement here. We need to be patient and we need to steady our hearts because the coming of the Lord is drawing near. When bad things happen, like the virus that's sweeping the world right now, um, we can remind ourselves that Jesus is coming back. It's a sign of his return. He's going to reward you for doing what is right. So don't get upset. Don't get all worried about all the things you see happening around you, like the COVID-19 virus. Because Jesus promised us, I will come again. Be patient and look forward to that day. Let's pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this message of the King's return. And we know, Lord, from the signs of the time that that return is drawing near. And help us to be ready, Lord. Purify our hearts as we purify them. And let us be patient and not just sit around waiting for your return, Lord, but to allow your spirit to change us to the person you've always wanted us to be, to have the fruit of the spirit, be loving and kind, compassionate, to be holy, to be forgiving of our enemies, to be believing and faithful, and to look forward to your return. And we thank you, Lord, for this message today. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen.
Okay, my friends. Well, with another great, I thought it was a great uh, message. This is really the gospel message, isn't it? So, steady your hearts. You know, cast away anything that would separate you from the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, turn away from sin and turn to the Lord. Praise him and give glory to him. And um, he's coming soon. So, we will see you again. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Okay,